How Eddie Van Halen loved prog rock, the band UK, and most notably, their guitarist, Alan Holdsworth. Yeah, Eddie was a progger. Journalist Steve Rosen talks about his old friend, Eddie Van Halen, on Rock History Music. Alan Holdsworth. And you know what? I I remember when Alan died, I remember getting on, because I was a UK fan. Um, I liked Danger Money, their second album. He wasn't on that. Uh, But so uh, Eddie was familiar with his work. It was strange, and I, I, I spoke earlier that Edward was not a fan or, or didn't have any interest in the history of bands. He kind of liked what he liked, but he was the prog guy, uh, which I guess surprised me a little. I mean, um, you know, you think of the, the kind of bands that, that he was covering not that, not that he could have done a, U, uh, a UK or a Gentle Giant or a King Crimson song as a cover band. But, you know, you think of all those songs that, that they were doing when he was still doing clubs, you know. And, um, I mean, there, there, weren't, there weren't even any bands approximating prog bands. Um, so, yeah, I was a little, I was a little um, blown away that, that he was a UK fan uh, and how much he loved Alan. Um, um, in the book, I, I write, um, Edward's over at the house one day, and I don't know if you can see any of, of this at all, John, but, but all the walls are covered in pictures, you know, and it's not that I'm trying to look at myself, but honestly, man, you know, people come over and they see him and they kind of say, who's that, who's that, you know, and, you know, it, it, it is a reminder of, you know, maybe some of the things I've done in, the, in this world, you know, anyway, he asked me, he was at the house, have you interviewed Alan Holdsworth? I said, yes. Um, uh, I hadn't interviewed Alan Holdsworth. I thought I had, I would interview Alan a couple of months later. But anyway, yeah, he loved Holdsworth. He loved prog bands. Um, um, UK was playing somewhere, maybe the Santa Monica Civic, was it like a 3000 theater, you know, somewhere, maybe Long Beach. Um, and, um, I think I had tickets, you know, and, and maybe even passes. I said, Hey man, you want to go? Um, or maybe they may have even have been playing at, uh, the Roxy. Um, and we go and cause you wanted to see Alan and he was also a big Bruford fan. I'm, I'm assuming he was a huge, uh, yes fan. Um, and as you mentioned, um, <laughs> Alan wasn't in the band. But there was also a guitar player. Didn't they, didn't they replace him with a guitar player? Or they, did they well, just replace him? The last, the the last version was uh, John Wetton, Terry Bozio, and uh, Eddie Jobson. So maybe this was a version maybe just before that. Because I thought there was another guitar There might have been another version. Because I only got into them by Danger Money. And then I went back. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so uh, so Hol- uh, Holzer isn't playing. Um, but yeah, Edward would tell me many times um, uh, he loved Holdsworth. I interviewed Alan, and he was just a very, very nice guy um, uh, that nobody understood. I mean, you know, um, I mean, unless you were a hardcore guitar player, I doubt if there were many non-musician fans that he had. He was just one of those guys. And if the only people listening to your music are guitar players, you're not going to sell five records. Because guitar players typically don't have any money, and they're probably not going to buy your record anyway, you know? And when he died, he didn't have any money. He had none. Zero. Um, You know, and then Edward had a chance to jam with him and Jeff Berlin at at GIT, Guitar Institute of Technology out here. I know Edward was really happy about that. Because he said, yeah, man, you know, people can kind of see me in a different light, you know, that I can kind of do this stuff. And by this stuff, he meant, you know, more prog stuff, you know, you know, you know, all those augmented and, you know, big spider cords and stuff. Um, it's interesting uh, that Eddie liked Prague. Yeah, it is. It is. You know, and then also Edward talked about Edward was going to produce um, uh, Alan for a solo record. And Alan, according to Edward, got a bit um, anxious, um, you know, wanted to kind of get it done. Ed was out on tour. He said, wait till I'm back on tour. Alan didn't want to wait. Went ahead and made the record with uh, Ted Templeman. 
who obviously knows how to make records, but there's no way Ted was going to have the rapport with Alan that Edwin would. And I think that was the biggest mistake of his entire career. I, I really do, unfortunately. By the way, why did you say it was when you went back, it was hard listening to that 1978 interview with Eddie? Because you were sitting with them then, you were just across, and that was because when you listen to an interview, you're there all of a sudden. You're back there. I am my own worst, most fearsome, ferocious critic, man. And I talked about it earlier about, you know, oh, well, I'll do two interviews and then no one's going to want me to interview them again. You know, maybe I shouldn't say these out loud. I, you know, I look at other writers and I think, my God, they seem so self-assured and so professional. And, you know, and, you know, I, I look back on the interview and it was good. I just thought it it could have been so much better. I'm not quite sure how, um, but, uh, you know, and that's, and I write about, I meant, I talk about those things in the book. You know, my I have the little sections in the book, the note, I call them note sections, you know. So now you're, you're reading what this guy, Steve Rosen, thinks the really thinks about this guy, Steve Rosen, you know. So you really want to know what this Rosen was thinking when he did that interview? Well, read the note section. I like I those. Know, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I mean, as I was doing them, I'm thinking, this is ridiculous. No one's going to care, you know, but a lot of people do like that stuff, you know, because I think it also reveals a lot of stuff about, the relationship between Edward and me and Edward himself, you know. Um, I don't know, man. I just thought it could have been better. Um, I look at some interviews and I go, wow, that was a really good interview. With Ed, that first one, yeah, it, it could have been, it was good. I thought it could have been better. Tone Chaser is the brand new book by Steve Rosen, who knew Eddie Van Halen going way back to 1977. It's a great book on so many different artists. Ronnie Montrose, an interesting run-in with him. Paul McCartney, Joe Cocker, Led Zeppelin, ACDC, most notably Bon Scott, Richie Blackmore. Now, that's a colorful story. But mostly Eddie Van Halen, who he knew, like I said, going way, way back before the first Van Halen album was ever released. There's so much inside information in this book. It's one of my favorite books that I've read in a long time. And I really enjoy talking to Steve. His stories are magical, really. There'll be links in the description where you can pick it up. Remember, if you want to contribute to the channel, if you want to make a donation, there are links on every one of our videos to PayPal. You can make a PayPal donation. You can join our Patreon, get early access to all our videos. But remember, subscribe to the channel, like our videos, comment on them, and share them on social media. This is John Bowden. More from Steve Rosen coming up in the next two, three days. This is Rock History Music. Take care. Take care.